I'm going to talk about more than you can figure it out at one time. So um, never be too concerned if you've missed my previous lectures. I do tend to repeat topics and talk about the same things because I've got over 700 lectures on here and for you to read all 700, um, I don't expect you to. So I do tend to repeat topics. So if you've been a long time user and you find that I sometimes get repetitive, it's because I do expect that there's new people that come along and um, perhaps they don't want to dig through 700 of these videos to find something. Uh, so I do tend to talk about the same subjects from time to time. If you find that I'm boring, well, sorry. Go find somebody else. Go listen to Justin Bieber or something. Okay, so uh, my previous lecture, I talked about Donnie Darko, parallel universes, time travel, and um, meditation, uh, synchronicities, coincidences, uh, Christopher Isherwood, Cabaret, uh, pre-World War II Germany, um, and how to create more coincidences, synchronicities in your life. Uh, the next topic is going to be, um, what good is it to know that you are in a world where um, synchronicities happen, that there is actually a collective unconscious and that somehow we are coordinated by whatever to have these coincidences? What good is it to you? How can you benefit from knowing this? Um, I go back to Jesus' famous teaching, the Golden Rule. Do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. So, if you are a greedy capitalist, um, if the other person that you are capitalizing on is basically another aspect of you, because you're all connected by this collective unconscious, which means you're all basically the same thing, meaning that you're all connected by consciousness and you're basically awareness, conscious awareness, then you're all one and the same thing. But if your little ego says, I've got to, you know, be very greedy for this body's got to have a huge yacht and, you know, all these different accoutrements that come with vast tracts of land, um, and to do that, I've got to overcharge uh, other versions of conscious awareness, which are, in other words, other people. Um, what does that really mean if you're doing it to somebody else? You know, um, in business school, they say charge what the market will bear, which is the ma maximize profits. How do you do that? By basically overcharging as much as you can by being a sharp uh, negotiator and getting as much money for you, 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 which is your consciousness and your idea of the body. Uh, but it's at the expense of what you're connected to, which is the other person. So, um, in other words, if when Jesus said it, he meant, you know, if you want to be treated well, then treat others well. The converse is if you treat others poorly, you should expect to be treated poorly. It doesn't seem to happen in our world. Um, the latest thing I posted on Facebook uh, last week was that um, the bottom 50% of um, people on the planet uh, lost a uh, trillion dollars of net worth, and the top 1% say uh, maybe gained about, I don't know, nine, more than nine trillion dollars. So uh, the economic disparity of this planet has become more and more and more unbalanced. And um, so what's going to happen um, if you don't follow Jesus' golden rule and all you do is profiteer on the backs of everyone else who have already, you've already impoverished and you're, you know, if you've got inherited wealth and you're the 1% and you own everything, I mean, your grandparents already screwed everyone else out of everything else. You came over to North America and you screwed the native North Americans out of their land. You know, you basically screwed everyone so that you can own everything. Uh, so um, what's going to happen if your golden rule is, you know, screw everybody else and all for me, me, me? 
Well, the traditional comeback is karma will bite you, but these people don't seem to see karma bite them. They just seem to collect more and more and more goods. So, does it mean in a future lifetime your soul is going to come back and you're going to be dirt poor? Or is something else going to happen? Are you finally going to finally figure it out that, you know, there's different aspects of me that are suffering because of my greed? I'm not going to tell you my answer. Because clearly in one lifetime, my lifetime, um, the 1% have got more and more and more. Are they happier? Well, uh, they certainly have more leisure time unless they spend all their time, you know. Who is the one in the counting house counting out their money? And if they spend all their time being a miser like Jacob Marley and Scrooge, then I don't think Scrooge was terribly happy, and I don't think Jacob Marley was terribly happy. They had all the money in the world, but they didn't have happiness. And their miserliness made a lot of people who were very poor even poorer, and made it very hard for them to survive. So what did that mean? Well... Is it true, you know, Jacob Marley, does that, is that what really happens if you're a terrible, greedy person? You um, create chains of bondage on your soul? I don't know. Do you really want to figure it out? When you're dead, do you want to be known as a hungry ghost? As the Tibetan Buddhists might say, that's what happens to you when you're incredibly greedy. You're like a great white shark constantly feasting on stuff that you don't need but you know someone else needs but you want it anyway you're a great white shark you just keep feasting and feasting and feasting uh, and then when you're dead uh, you still you're still hungry you got an incredible hungry and then you go to the realm of the hungry ghosts where you've got an incredible hunger and you've got a very small mouth and a very small throat passage so even when you get food, it's never enough to satisfy your hunger. Sounds not very nice. Constantly being hungry. That's just one possible thing that might happen to you. Anyways, the state of the world is uh, the way it is. And seeing the synchronicities is only going to prove to you that we are all connected and if you are one of the one percent and you're meditating maybe you'll start to uh, figure out that all your money and all your power and your wealth um, uh, might be more of a hindrance to your now it doesn't seem that way though I mean they seem to live very happy lives lifestyles of the rich and famous and the Hollywood lifestyles of the wives of the rich people um, so it's very easy to see why these humans uh, are greedy the way they are. I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. Uh, all I can tell you is um, if you wonder why perhaps it's because the problem resides in your hungry ghostness. But I'm going to guess there's very few, if anyone, who belongs to the 1% who ever watches my videos. So for the rest of you, um, does it apply to you? Just know that the 1% are incredibly greedy and um, they love to publicize their philanthropy. You know, they gift money away, little bits here and there. Uh, does it make up for their lifetime of greed? Uh, not in my but maybe in their opinion, they like to have their name on the side of a new wing of a hospital or something. <laughs>